Good day. My name is David Wild, and this is part two of a lecture over chapter one, What is Management, from Connect Master Management 2.0. Let's talk about managerial levels, skills, and roles. Now that we have reviewed the definition of management and have an idea of what managers actually do, we can delve a little deeper into what affects their daily activities. To do this, we explore the manager's task at different levels of the organization, the skills they must possess to perform these duties, and the numerous roles the manager must play within the organization. Levels of Management Not all managers are expected to complete the same types of tasks. One major determinant of a manager's duty in the organization is the level of management at which the person functions within the organization. As seen in Figure 2 on your screen, organizations tend to have three levels of management, upper-level managers, middle-level managers, and lower-level or front-line managers, commonly called supervisors. Let's talk a little about each of these three levels of managers. First, upper-level managers. The primary function of the upper-level management team is to develop the mission, vision, and strategy for the entire organization by considering challenges and opportunities in the current business environment. These are not only the highest paid managers in nearly every corporation, they are also the positions to which many career managers aspire. Upper-level managers also enjoy the most privileges when compared with the other levels of management. Members of the upper-level management team usually answer to the CEO and the company's board of directors. The second level of management has middle-level managers. Middle-level managers are responsible for interpreting and implementing the organizational policies created by upper-level managers while coordinating the activities of lower-level managers. Middle managers are usually the largest tier of the three management levels, and these individuals are expected to be the jack-of-all-trades in the organization. They act as the sounding board for upper-level upper managers, evaluate the effectiveness of company policies, and assist lower-level managers in better utilizing the organization's resources. A major issue at this management level is the barriers to entry into upper-level management for both women and minorities. This phenomenon is known as the glass ceiling. It is a metaphorical, invisible barrier that prevents women and minorities from gaining equal access to many top managerial positions. Finally, let's talk about lower-level managers. Lower-level managers supervise and coordinate the activities of non-managerial employees within the organization. They are not only the front line, but also the main level of management the customers and employees interact with when issues arise. These managers perform tasks in all departments of the organization and are often referred to as supervisors. In comparison to the other managerial levels, Lower-level managers' professionalism and behavior are much more visible to the general public. Thus, lower-level managers provide the most visible reflection of how the organization conducts business, potentially impacting its reputation to a greater degree than any of the managers above them. Now let's talk about managerial skills. While there are distinctly different managerial levels in every organization, there is some degree of similarity in the skills that make managers effective across these different levels of management. Successful managers possess specific skills that positively impact the way they manage, although the degree of utilization of these skills will vary based upon the level of management, they are all considered important if managers are to progress in their professional career. Technical skills refer to the level of ability and proficiency a manager possesses to perform subordinates' duties. 
Although an individual may excel at executing the tasks necessary to maintain a high level of job performance, the skill set necessary to be a good manager is quite different from the skill set required to perform a job effectively. Therefore, organizations should be very wary of promoting individuals who have demonstrated only a high level of technical skills. Adaptation skills. A typical manager's day is extremely unstructured with many interruptions, events, issues, and situations that arise, which must be addressed immediately. The ability to be flexible, to remain calm, and appear in control regardless of the situation signifies a high degree of adaptation skills. Interpersonal and interactional skills. How well a manager communicates with subordinates or superiors defines the level of his or her interpersonal or communication skills. The ability to lead and to motivate individuals to coordinate groups or teams toward achieving the organizational's goals and interact with colleagues in a socially adept manner could be the difference between a manager's degree of success or failure. Because one of the most important factors in determining the capability of any manager is how well they get along with their colleagues and network within the organization. Good interpersonal skills are considered essential for effective managers. Conceptual skills. A set of skills that truly separates managers from non-managerial personnel is the manager's ability to see the big picture. Managers must understand where their job and or department fit into the overall scheme of the entire organization. As managers move up the organization, they are granted access to higher levels of information, which allows them to envision the entire company and how the parts interact. Diagnostic skills. Possessing the ability to identify, react to, analyze, and solve problems that arise daily in organizations is considered a diagnostic skill. Being able to solve issues in a timely manner keeps the organization running smoothly. Managers who possess the diagnostic skills to effectively develop and implement solutions to situations such as these are considered quite valuable to any organization. And finally, Political skills. The ability of managers to amass a power base, to improve their status and position in the organizational hierarchy, and network effectively within the organization depends on their political skills, which include an ability to get along with others in the organization. Managers who possess high levels of political skills are afforded the opportunity to make greater contributions to the organization than those who are ignorant or refuse to acknowledge or utilize their political skills. As managers pass through each level of the organization, they will need certain skills more than others. At the lower levels of the organization, managers will need effective technical and adaptation skills. As managers move up the organizational ladder, higher levels of interpersonal and conceptual skills become more valuable. Finally, as manager, managers reach the upper levels of the company, it becomes imperative that they make quick, precise, high-quality decisions and that they understand and participate in the political landscape of the organization to achieve their objectives. The application of all of these skills, to some degree and in different situations, will dictate the degree of success that any manager will have in their respective organization. And now let's talk about managerial roles. One of the most famous studies in management was conducted in the 1960s and 1970s by Henry Mintzberg, who sought to find out what it was a manager actually did. Mintzberg had his graduate students follow and document the professional lives of five CEOs for about a week. The shadowing of these CEOs revealed four interesting insights that should go a long way to illustrating the lives of most managers. First, time was a manager's most valued resource. Managers were consistently trying to save time by performing their activities in the quickest manner possible. Second, managerial activities took place in short, varied, unconstructed bursts. Very few activities lasted more than an hour, 
and free time was practically non-existent. Phone calls, meetings, and problem solving dominated a manager's days. Third, managers work longer hours than almost anyone else in the organization. Lunches and breaks served as meeting times, and in many instances, after a long day, managers performed work activities at home. Again, this was why time was considered such an important resource for managers. Finally, managers played three distinct roles that could be broken down into ten subordinate roles. In Table 1 in your textbook, you see the three roles that Mintzberg outlined for managers, interpersonal roles, informational roles, and decisional roles broken down in a single table. In this lecture, <clears throat> we're going to cover each of these separately. So first, let's talk about the manager's interpersonal roles. These deal with a manager's abil ability to effectively communicate and interact with others. Under the general category of interpersonal roles, you see three roles that a manager carries out. These being first as a figurehead, the symbolic head of the organization, the visible person out front that everyone knows represents the company. The manager can also be a leader, the one who sets the goals of the organization and is responsible for their achievement by motivating organizational members to complete their task. And Third, the liaison role, the person who asks, acts as a bridge between groups either inside or outside the organization. Linking these groups together helps develop alliances, which are extremely important to achieving the organization's goals. Next, a manager can also carry out informational roles. This is where they effectively acquire and deliver accurate information. In terms of informational roles, there are, ten, there are three more subordinate informational roles. The first is that of being a disseminator, deliverer of information regarding policies, initiatives, strategies, and so on. This is the person who lets everyone know what's going on in the organization. The manager can also be a monitor, this person is always on top of current situations through material gathered from various sources. By obtaining information from different outlets, this person manages to stay in the loop, so to speak. Finally, the, the manager can serve as a spokesperson, the one who communicates on behalf of the organization at meetings, functions. Finally, the manager can carry out decisional roles. This is how well they effectively solve problems. The manager can be a disturbance handler, the person who resolves conflict, responds to unpredictable situations, and solves problems that could potentially derail the organization from achieving its goals. The manager can also be an entrepreneur, the individual who is consistently seeking out new opportunities to provide viable revenue streams for the organization. The entrepreneur also champions innovation, change, and development. The manager can also be a negotiator, the one who continually discusses and mediates with numerous groups both inside and outside the company to reach agreements and compromises that benefit the organization. Finally, the last decisional role is that of a resource allocator, the person who distributes the limited resources of the organization, for example, money, capital, and employees to the various groups of departments in the organization. Although Mintzberg's study was conducted almost 50 years ago, many of its findings still hold true today. One can easily surmise from Mintzberg's study that while management may con be considered a glamorous position by some, it is also filled with hard work, long hours, and a wide variety of unplanned activities. So in summary, 
Managers' tasks differ at various levels of the organization. At the upper level of management, managers develop the overall mission, vision, and strategy for the organization. Middle-level managers implement the policies put forth by upper-level managers. Lower-level managers supervise and coordinate the activities of workers and may work directly with customers as well. Managers also require specific skills to be successful, including technical skills, adaptation skills, interpersonal and interactional skills, conceptual skills, diagnostic skills, and political skills. At the lower levels of the organization, technical skills and adaptive skills are the most useful. As managers move up within the organization, interpersonal, conceptual, diagnostic, and political skills become more important. Mintzberg defined three superordinate organizational roles that managers must play to be effective. The interpersonal role, the informational role, and the decisional role. These three roles can be further broken down into the 10 subordinate roles we covered in this lecture. This concludes part two of the lecture on chapter one, what is management.